Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achona. Welcome to episode 26 of Game Programming. Let's take a look at the tile class now. So last time we created, yesterday we actually created a random level class and the day before we created an actual level class sort of template. Um, and someone actually mentioned that I should make this abstract. Yeah, that's not a bad idea actually. Making it, it a public abstract class uh, wouldn't wouldn't be a bad idea. That would be strictly correct. But you know, I don't want to do that too early because in, in the development cycle, just because I might actually use this class for something. So I don't really want to make it abstract just yet. Um, and half of you probably, more than half of you, probably don't even know what abstract means. So just we're not getting into complex stuff like that just yet. Uh, we probably will just to you know just because it's good practice. But um. For the minute, we actually need to create a tile class. Now, yesterday I actually said that we'd be rendering tiles today. In order to render tiles, we need to actually make a tile class because each individual tile is gonna have its own rendering method. And that might sound inefficient, but it's actually more efficient. And I'll, so I'll, I'll explain all this in a minute. So right over here in the level class, let's just right click on it, hit new and class. And we're just gonna type tile, right? And here in the package, We'll change it to level.tile. So in other words, we're creating a folder in level called tile because there's going to be all different types of tiles, like just the normal tile class. Then we've got stuff like, you know, like the grass tiles, stone, water, ice, I don't know, trees, whatever. There's all different types of tiles. So I sort of want to group them in a folder just to organize my game a bit more. Let's hit finish. So public class tile. Let's talk about the tile class. Let's just take an overview of the tile class here. So what is a tile first of all? If we actually just launch our game, did I hit the button? Yeah, I did. If we actually just launch our game, you'll see a bunch of, well, you know, tiles. Um, there's a bunch of grass tiles here and each one of these, right? Each, each little like section of the screen that is 16 by 16, that is one texture. Um, and I guess, probably shouldn't explain it like that because we might have textures that are larger than 16 by 16. But one like one little block here, that's called a tile, okay? So what does the tile class have to do, right? Each tile should have a position. Each tile should have a sprite because even if that sprite is null or like a void sprite, it should still have a sprite because we want it to be, if, if we want something to be displayable in some way, we want to We actually want to attach a sprite to it. That way, you know, it's, if we if we have a tile like without a sprite, it if something crashes in the future, it might be a lot harder to actually fix or you know diagnose just because it doesn't have a sprite to it, and it should have a sprite to it because a tile is something that we need to display at all times. Okay, and by all times, I mean if if a specific tile is actually on the screen, it should be rendered. That's how tiles work, or at least in this game anyway. Um, something like an entity might not necessarily have a sprite because we might have an entity that's just like a, I don't know, like a, just, just a level timer. It's just like some, some background logic in our level that doesn't necessarily have to be displayed on the screen, but still has to be computed and calculated. All right, but the tile, tiles do need to have a sprite. Um, other things that tiles need off the top of my head, well, they need to be rendered first of all. And also they probably need some way to recognize if it's actually solid or not. So in other words, if it actually should stop like mobs passing through. In other words, is it collidable or not? Is it a solid, is it a solid object? So to define the position, we're just gonna put public int x and y. All right, again, the x coordinate is gonna be the x coordinate on the screen, y is gonna be y, self-explanatory. Now, to attach a sprite to it, we simply type public sprite sprite. All right, simple as that. And of course, we will import the sprite class. Okay, so now we actually need to make a constructor. And every time we make a tile, this specific constructor has to actually happen. It has to be run. And we'll simply type public tile and again, sprite sprite. A few of you are already gonna guess that I'm gonna type this dot sprite equals sprite. All right, so first of all, this is not the default constructor, right? Because it's got a parameter in it. It's actually got a parameter that is a sprite object in it. Okay, that means that anytime we actually want to create new tile in any in any way, we set something equal something equal to new tile or new whether it be new grass tile, if grass tile extends tile, anything that is tile or extends tile, if we want to set it equal to new something, we're gonna have to put a sprite here, otherwise it won't work. So this is an example for you right here. If we try not to do that, it's gonna it's not gonna work. Alright. 
Again, most of you probably understand that, but by doing this, we're requiring that each tile we actually create is gonna have a sprite. The other thing we need to do is render, and again, what is rendering, right? What do we actually, what, what, what um, properties or what, uh, what information do we need, what data do we need to actually render a tile? Well, firstly, we actually need the position of where on the screen we want to render it, so in X and in Y. And then we also need what's rendering it. We need something to actually render it, which is a screen class, which is going to manage all kinds of rendering because the screen, the screen class is what puts stuff onto our screen. Okay, so that's rendering taken care of. As again, I'm not actually filling out anything here because we'll do that in subclasses, kind of like we did with this generate level method and right here as well. And then finally, we're just going to type public boolean solid. All right, now you'll see it's actually a boolean, so it's not void. It returns a boolean, which is a true or false value. And then, you know, by default, just in case, we want to just return false because again, it gives us an error if we don't return anything. So let's just return false. Okay. So in other words, by default, if we don't actually override this, this method in a subclass, then by default, the tile is not going to be solid so we can pass through it. All right. Simple as that. So that is the basic overview of the tile class. We probably won't even add anything else into this specific code, just in, into this tile class, it's pretty much ready to go. Again, we will define public static tiles kind of like we did with public static sprites. Same way, absolutely the same way, because tiles are static. So if we create a new grass tile, that grass tile is not gonna change. It's gonna be the same. It's gonna be one, it's gonna manage one tile, that's it. So yeah, but that is how the, that is how the tile class, sorry, works. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. If you did, please hit that like button and leave a comment. Let me know how you guys are going. And um, yeah, I'll see, I'll see you guys tomorrow where we'll hopefully move on to actually creating the grass tile object and move on to eventually, you know, rendering uh, a random level onto our screen. But until then, guys, goodbye. Mm -hmm.